Welcome to Biology Minds. Today we're going to talk about anatomy and physiology, specifically cells. And the study of cells is called cytology. Okay. And when we study tissues, that's histology. The chapter starts talking about sex cells versus somatic cells. Somatic cells are, are regular cells, the cells that you typically think of when we're talking about cells in the body. But there also are sex cells that are going to have half the amount of genetic information because you're going to get half from your mother and half from your father. Obviously, males have sperm, females have oocytes or eggs. When we talk about cells, we look at the different organelles. Now, different types of cells and different tissues and different organs will have different organelles or different varying amounts of, of organelles but we just look at the typical cell when we talk about this chapter in anatomy and physiology when we talk about centrioles we that's typically referring to an, an important organelle for mitosis the cytoskeleton gives that the cell some structure, uh, a little bit of support. Plasma membrane is kind of the gatekeeper allowing uh, or deciding what's going to come in and what's going to flow out of the cell, trying to make sure that it has what it wants inside and it keeps whatever it wants outside on the outside. Microvilli, very important. Okay, they're there to increase surface area. All right. If we want to be able to absorb more more uh, molecules, then we need to have more surface area. So microvilli, they're the, the little projections on a cell. They are there to increase surface area. Cilia, they can help to move the cell. Okay. Uh, proteasomes, these are these enzymes. With regulatory proteins at their ends, they break down and recycle any damaged or abnormal intracellular proteins. Ribosomes, they're all about building proteins. Okay, when we talk about protein synthesis, we're talking about the ribosomes. They are what synthesize proteins. Golgi apparatus also helps with the synthesis of proteins, okay, storage and alteration and packaging of proteins specifically enzymes okay enzymes are a type of proteins mitochondria that's all about energy okay produces atp which is the cell energy atp remember that endoplasmic reticulum there's two different types we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum often abbreviated rer and then you have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum or ser Typically, we talk about the RER or the rough endoplasmic reticulum. They have the ribosomes on them, okay? And that's going to be there so that we can package and, and uh, process the proteins, okay? Peroxisomes and lysosomes, they're vesicles uh, important in uh, de uh, Degration and digestion enzymes, all right. Nucleus, that's like the brain of the cell, okay. Keep that in mind. Plasma membrane, like I said, it's controlling what goes in and what comes out of the cell. It is made up of a phospholipid bilayer, okay. Bilayer meaning two layers. And they have hydrophilic heads, okay, water-loving heads, and hydrophobic tails. So if you see these are this is our phospholipid bilayer, where you have the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails. It's important to remember this because water will then be attracted to these heads pushed down in to this area and then depending on the gradient they will either make their way through or they will remain back out to stay on the outside so 
the plasma membrane or the cell membrane is there to keep the balance of not only molecules in general, but more specifically water, water balance. The, what, what matters the size, typically the size of the molecule, molecules that are too big will not go through the, pl the plasma membrane and will have to make use of uh, channel proteins or they just will not come through at all. So the cytoplasm, that is the watery stuff that all the organelles are sitting in, okay? Organelles are sitting in this cytoplasm and it is made up of cytosol, okay? Which is typically water, but also contains different nutrients, ions, waste products. Okay, it is high in potassium, low in sodium. So protein synthesis, uh, it, typically we in previous chapters, we talk about it as a short process where it's your DNA is becoming your mRNA and your mRNA is then ultimately dictating what your amino acids are. Okay, but it's a longer process. First, it starts um, with, you know, a gene or a segment of DNA is going to dictate what the messenger RNA is, okay? In the DNA, the DNA that's in the nucleus is going to <clears throat> be used to code for the messenger RNA, which is going to go to the ribosomes to build our protein. Second step, it le the mRNA leaves the nucleus, attaches to a free ribosomes in the ribosome in the cytoplasm or a ribosome that's on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And then proteins constructed on the free ribosomes are released in the cytosol for use within the cells. So we have these proteins that are being made by the ribosomes, they're released so that we can then build our proteins. It doesn't just stop there, okay? The newly synthesized protein folds into its three-dimensional shape. Okay, so you have your proteins that are have a primary shape, secondary shape, our tertiary shape or structure, and then our quaternary shape or structure. All right. And then the proteins are then modified within the endoplasmic reticula, reticulum. Regions of the endoplasmic reticulum then bud off, forming transport vesicles that are going to go to the Golgi apparatus. And the transport vesicles carry these proteins and glycoproteins generated in the ER towards the Golgi apparatus. The transport vesicles then fuse to create, to form the cis face or the receiving face of the Golgi apparatus. Okay, so. Keep in mind, we started in the nucleus, and we've moved to the ribosomes using the endoplasmic reticulum, and now we're on to the Golgi body or Golgi apparatus. Multiple transport vesicles combine to form the cisternae or the cisphase. Further protein and glycoprotein modification and packaging occur as the cisternae move towards the maturing or the trans or the back face. Small transport vesicles return uh, resident Golgi proteins to the forming cisphase for reuse. Okay, so these proteins can be reused. The maturing trans face or the shipping side or the back end generates vesicles that carry modified proteins away from the Golgi apparatus. One type of vesicle becomes a lysosome. Those are those digestive enzymes that we talked about. Two other types of vesicles proceed to the plasma membrane. Okay, uh, secretory and membrane renewal. Secret Tory vesicles fuse with the plasma membrane and empty their products outside the cell by exocytosis. 
membrane renewal vesicles add new lipids and proteins to the plasma membrane. So as you're creating these proteins and they're being processed and packaged, they're then going to be used by the cell. DNA, we see why DNA is so important. DNA is coding for our proteins, all right, for our amino acids and then for our proteins. Cell membrane, okay, it's a, bar a barrier. We say that it is selectively permeable. It allows some things to come in, but not all things to come in. If it is something isn't allowed to come in or does it can't make its way in, we say that the cell or the cell membrane is impermeable to that specific molecule. If it allows something in like water, we'll say it's permeable to water, freely permeable to water, okay? but Typically, since we talk about the cell membrane allowing some things, but not all things to pass through, whether in or out of the cell, that is why we call it selectively permeable. And some of the reasons that something may be restricted could be size. Typically, we talk about size, but also may have to do with electrical charge, ions, molecular shape, and solubility. There's different types of transport active transport versus passive transport whether energy is required atp is required or atp is not required when we talk about passive we're talking about diffusion unless we're talking about water that is diffusion uh the osmosis is diffusion of water so you can talk about diffusion in general or you can talk about more specifically about osmosis which is diffusion of water so don't get these terms mixed up okay um it's kind of like Osmosis is diffusion, but diffusion isn't necessarily osmosis. Um, there's also carrier-mediated transport, which can be passive or active, and then vesicular transport, which requires energy, so it is active transport. Diffusion always talks about concentration gradient, so it doesn't need any energy typically, but it does rely on the fact of how many molecules are on one side versus the other side of this membrane. Okay, they're going to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So just like if I were to drop a little sugar cube into a beaker of water, okay, it would dissolve and eventually it would make its way throughout. It was going to, going to go from an area of high concentration, this area down here, and it's going to move up to areas of low, uh, of low concentration. It's going to dissipate throughout this beaker. Okay, so even though you think of it as there's no membrane here, it's the same principle where it's going from an area where there where there's a lot of molecules of this type to an area where there are not a lot of molecules of this type. Once again, um, factors inf influence diffusion, size, temperature, energy, and concentration gradient is a big one. So simple um, diffusion, uh, we talk about if just molecules are moving across that plasma, plasma membrane, or you have channel-mediated diffusion where you need those protein channels in order for something to move across that membrane. Once again, you want to know that we have these channel proteins where they're going to allow for specific molecules, larger molecules to move if we want them to move, if the cell wants them in or out of the, of the cell. And then we have this phospholipid bilayer with the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails, and they're sitting opposite of each other. You have, your, they're sitting tail to tail, all right, tail to tail heads on the opposite sides. This is our phospholipid bilayer and water is going to flow freely depending on the concentration gradient. Osmosis, like I said, diffusion of water. Okay, osmotic pressure is the force of concentration gradient of the water. That water wants to go from an area where there's a lot of water to an area where there's a little bit of water. So when we see, when we talk about tonicity or the amount of solute in a solution, okay, that's going to affect where the water is going to go. Okay, you have isotonic, that means that the solution does not cause osmotic flow of water in or out of the cell. You have hypotonic, there's less solute, and it loses water through osmosis. 
hypertonic, there's more solute, so it gains water by, uh, by osmosis. Here you see isotonic water. Uh, the amount of water on the inside of the cell is pretty much the same as the amount of water on the outside of the cell. So maybe one molecule of water flows in, but then another water molecule flows out and it stays balanced. On the other hand, you have a hypotonic solution, okay, where there's a very low amount of water on the inside. So the water flows inward and that can make the the cell swell. On the other hand, you have a hypertonic solution where the water moves out of the cell. Okay, in this solution, there's a lot, there's not as much water in comparison to the amount of molecules as there are in the cell. So that makes the water want to create that balance. That water is going to leave and it's going to make that cell shrink. So we don't want cells to swell and burst or lice. We don't want them to shrink and shrivel up and die. We want them to be in an isotonic solution. Carrier mediated uh, transport involves sodium potassium exchange pump, which is very important when we talk about muscle cells. And we talk about nerve cells. So we'll talk about this more later in the year, but just keep that in mind, the sodium potassium exchange pump important in muscles and nerves. And here they just show you how three sodium are going to leave as two potassium come in. And that pump specifically does that. 